Ah, Nero. Believe it or not, this is Nero, and so is this. However, the emperor's physical decline also matched that of his empires. But who is Nero, and what led to his bizarre decline as emperor? Nero, or Lucius Domitius Ahenobarbus, was born on December 15th in the year 37, with his early upbringing being primarily from his mother, Julia Agrippina, who essentially made Nero emperor. After poisoning her second husband, she married her uncle, who was subsequently emperor, Claudius, which allowed her to put in a good word for young Nero, despite Claudius having his own son and rightful heir, Britannicus. Nero's mother, however, was not even close to finish. After being believed to have killed the previous wife of Claudius, she was also believed to have poisoned Claudius himself in 54, and later Britannicus in 55 in an attempt to secure Nero the throne, which ultimately worked as well, everyone else was dead. Agrippina had Nero swiftly accepted as emperor by the Praetorian Guard, and at the age of 16, he took the throne. The early reign of Nero was heavily influenced by Burrus and Seneca, as the young emperor was most likely looking for direction, he allowed these two to heavily influence his decisions. Additionally during this, and at the recommendation of Seneca, Nero began to rely less on his mother's input and more on his counterparts. With this information in tow, and understanding his upbringing, it would make sense that the young emperor would begin to rule unjustly or harshly. However, his early reign was quite the opposite. Nero's early reign consisted of allowing the senate more independence, banning any contests involving bloodshed, and banning capital punishment. And as well as implementing tax reforms, Nero also enacted laws allowing slaves to submit formal complaints if they had unjust owners, as well as treason nearly disappearing. Nero even went to the extent to forgive individuals who plotted against him, and in an effort to promote education and talent, the emperor held contests in athletics, poetry, and theater in place of gladiatorial games. This surely should put Nero amongst the recognized good emperors, so why doesn't it? When you hear of Nero, it's often about his harsh and selfish nature. So what happened to bring his reign from such heights to such extreme lows? The downfall of his reign began around 58. After his impressive plans for public work projects, the emperor began to realize his power and began shifting from improving the Roman society to indulging in his personal interests. Knowing that there were essentially no rules as emperor, Nero began doing as he pleased, such as acting in public theaters and performing the lyre in public exhibitions, which no, the public did not like. His reign really began to decline, after he murdered his own mother in 59 for criticizing his use of imperial powers, and later his wife, Octavia, in 62. Additionally in 62, Nero married Papea, which is subsequently when Seneca, feeling that he lost influence over Nero, retired. From 62 to 64, Nero lost much of his influence and support, which went to a further extent after the fire in 64, which decimated much of Rome. The real problem came when Nero began reconstructing Rome in a Greek style, and began the construction of his golden house. Yes, absolutely ridiculous, but it does make for a pretty cool tour if you visit Rome. And after citizens began to blame Nero for the fire, he attempted to shift the blame onto Christians, which earned himself the title of Antichrist in early Roman Christianity. Succeeding this period, Roman provinces also began to grow uneasy of the emperor. As well, they were held to pay for the emperor's extravagant purchases. Yeah, I would be too especially taking into account that the most recent expenditures account for 2 billion sesterti. By the year 65, Nero had a number of enemies, many of which attempted the plot against him. Ultimately, however, these rebellions would be stuffed, and most conspirators pardoned. In 66, Nero took a visit to Greece, which saw him adopt Greek culture, and ultimately stay for 15 months. However, upon his return to Rome, Nero continued his strange theater obsession, which did not vow well with many Romans as members of the public did not want to watch a descendant of Caesar perform not only Greek roles, but casual roles too. With one mention from Gaius Julius Vindex stating that he watched Nero, quote, playing pregnant women and slaves about to be executed. In 68, several rebellions brewed and formed. However, Nero was careless, which did not boast well for the emperor, as his legions claimed Galba emperor and the senate ordered his death, which subsequently saw his palace praetorian guards leave and his freedmen abandoned him by ship. Inevitably, Nero was claimed to have killed himself following the orders and events on June 9th, 68. A promising reign for Rome's citizens turned into a selfish and quite bizarre one, but who really knows what led Nero down this path? My guess? The ability to do whatever you could possibly imagine, with nearly no consequence. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, and comment why you think Nero went mad. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing for future content similar to this.